Hi, it's Andrew here. Um, I'd like to share with you some uh, this case study. Uh, it's a potted study, really, uh, of a 12-year-old Arab mare. And there's a lot of things typical to this case that um, both horse owners and farriers might like to uh, hear about and may not be aware of. With the video clip of the mare initially, that was the, the first day that I saw her and uh, the mare had, was on some sort of painkillers but it wasn't touching the sides, it really was not uh, having a, a, an effect, she was very distressed. I was called in and she had gamji padding on her feet, some impression material in the back part of the feet um, and that wasn't giving her any relief. Um, albeit it was done well-meaningly and it can make a difference to some horses but not with this one. So what that needed was serious uh, support underneath that frog. So um, I was waiting for a vet to arrive whilst I uh, quietly worked around the mare and was able to thankfully work on one foot get a shoe in place and frog support so I create a frog cradle as we call it using the imprint hoof repair material and once I've got the one shoe on it made it easier for me to get the second shoe on and the mare was quite calm throughout. So I fitted the imprint first That's shoes in the first instance as the mare was going to be confined to box rest and in a case like this this is where you need to definitely uh, cut out all forms of exercise so there's less mechanical breakdown within that foot. The more breakdown within the foot, the longer the journey to recovery. Now the second video of her walking on the yard with uh, Dean actually leading her. This was uh, during a, a training session with other farriers. Um, that's mid-September and between the that first visit and this one, so that's July, 7th of July, 6th, 7th of July to into September. She had, well, like a lot of horses get, a uh, toe infection. So she'd, we'd got her comfortable with respect to the laminitis treatment. And she looked quite, quite amazingly comfortable as she moved about. We tried to keep her as restricted as possible for the time being, um, but she got a foot infection, a toe infection in first the left and then the right, and it was on and off intermittently, um, causing a real frustration because we couldn't find it. Uh, sometimes you can go straight to a, a track and, and get to it, but this was like infected from the inside out. Um, it, I did uh, eventually drain both of these at, diff at the different times, but um, euthanasia was seriously considered uh, because um, it seemed like we weren't getting uh, the result. It wasn't clear cut quite exactly what was wrong. It wasn't just heat, burst the pus out and job done. It was a little bit more complex than that. But thankfully, she came through it. Um, and at that stage, that was September, there was still a bit to play for. The, her feet were got quite a long way to go to recover. Uh, so let's have a look at these stills of uh, the soles of her feet in different stages. So the first sole of you we've got here is the 5th of September. The first one that we haven't got still of would have been uh, July, but the sole at that point didn't look, um, was pretty unremarkable. But by September, the original sole had perforated, but above that was a new sole because it had been held together. Um, so there was no um, ingress from the outside, but there, there was a, a bit of a bloody pool or a what should we call it, not quite a hematoma, seroma, there was blood pooled in the sole and in the laminae. 
and it was this, in the bread laminae that the infection burst out just in the toe and, and dorsal immediately just to the inside toe not not from the sole itself which is something so we'd held the foot together shortened the toe, toe as much as I felt safe doing in the early stages of laminitis I don't like butchering the toe back and re further weakening the hoof capsule we shortened the break over quite dramatically and when trimming these laminitic feet the medial lateral balance is just as important as ever in fact more so when they've got an unstable foot um, so getting the dorsal palmar um, balance right that is important of course but yes you must get this medial lateral balance so the second image here we've got which was yeah 25th of october what we see here is the new sole firming up quite nicely there and there's still spread laminae what i you done here between those images was pack that um, toe with a keratex hoof putty which is medicated um, antibacterial putty which i find is very useful for these for these cases now there's a sole there a juvenile sole but um if we'd have chopped that out too soon, we'd have had a bloody mess. I mean, you see there's some asymmetry to the foot. I'm focusing on the, le uh, the right forefoot, but um, both feet were pretty much uh, a pair, so that's why I'm concentrating on one foot. I don't want to repeat myself. So you can see that fairly clearly. Um, we'll go on. The next one, that was... Uh, Yes, 25th of November, and I've removed a significant chunk because she's regenerated something which is hard and horny, um, whereas before that was pulp. So we got the toe well back, and now, I, now when I fit a shoe to that, I'll be bridging that toe without pressurizing it, um, especially just the, the, in the center of the toe. Um, it's in pair circulation that we see some symmetry coming back there's the side view showing the laminae which I paired back to, to clean laminae you see it's cream in color um, uh, not bloody it was it was through the toe there that the infection set up a lot of dead tissue inside there heat can, uh, so rather than just dead tissue it can get infected and then blow up and erupt so I fitted the imprint plus shoes as she's moving about it's just going up and down inside the yard there and that's a little bit stronger shoe um, you'll see the just the afarias eye lining that uh, gaze down the limb the pastern and the foot the inside still looks slightly low i've actually got more material on the inside beefed it up and you'll see from the sole of you that shoe it's across the toe and round the outside i've rounded that off it's the way the horse wants to move so you see i haven't rounded off the inside that would have been completely defeating the object i mean nothing the farriers must appreciate that um with the laminitics and with their everyday shoeing um it needs the bits rolled off where the, to sit the foot and allow the foot to land where it wants to. So this uh, final, well not quite the final, but the one with the mare and the menage here. This is the sort of image that makes my day. That's just the beginning of January. She's feeling better. When you've got a very sore horse, they don't do much rolling, do they? Now she's having a little bit of a dance about, kicking her heels. She's not saying ouch. She's being a horse again. And a couple of weeks after this, I trimmed her feet and left the shoes off. And she's still, to my knowledge, a happy horse. So that's pretty quick 
turn around considering the case.